In this video, I'm going to give you so many ideas for what to eat on the Mediterranean diet for breakfast, lunch, dinner, even snacks and desserts. So by the end of this video, you're going to be equipped with all the information you need to get going on this healthy eating plan. Hey there, I'm Dr. Anna. I'm a medical doctor. I was trained in Italy. And on this channel, you're going to learn how to master the Mediterranean diet and your health. So let's get going with our breakfast ideas. All right, let's start by just taking a stab at breakfast. Now, there are some differing opinions on whether breakfast is essential in your day. I would say to listen to your body. Now, when it comes to children or let's say pregnant women, growth is really important. So I would argue it's probably not a good idea for people in those groups to skip meals. But for an adult who's finished growing, you have to know if you're one of those people that needs to eat breakfast or not. I'm really not able to tell you what to do. But if you're a breakfast eater, then you might wanna know what kind of a breakfast you should eat on the Mediterranean diet that is best satisfying your body's needs. So breakfast is of course a way for us to jumpstart our metabolism, our energy, and set the day right. We wanna eat a breakfast that is nutrient dense with lots of vitamins and minerals, but making sure that it is not too sugar or process so that would cause us to have a crash in our energy midway through the morning. Of course, there is no better way to start the day than with a nutrient packed breakfast that will fire up your energy to sustain you for many hours. So hear this, I need you to understand that when thinking about a healthy balanced breakfast and really any healthy balanced meal, there are three things you wanna make sure are included every time you have a meal and every time you have breakfast. What are those things? Fiber, healthy fat, protein. If you hit all three of these components, which I like to call the healthy trifecta, you are setting yourself upright with good nutrition to ease digestion. Now, why do we care about digestion? Well, digestion is obviously an important part of eating a meal and reaping the health benefits from it. Our bodies are meant to eat food, not just nutrients. The digestive process, which is the process that after you're chewing food, goes to your stomach, it starts to get broken down and a lot of chemical reactions are happening, and then it starts moving further down the pipeline. But in order for your body to be able to extract the nutrition, so the vitamins, the minerals, and other really important properties of food like anti-inflammatory properties, there needs to be enough time. And what slows digestion down? Well, those three things that I just mentioned. It is fiber, healthy fat, and protein. All three of these things slow the digestion down so that our body has enough time to get all the nutrition out of the food, into the bloodstream, and ultimately circulating our body so it can go to all the cells in our organs that need it so they can do their metabolism thing and our body can stay alive and healthy. By eliminating these components from a meal, but especially from breakfast, you are risking causing your blood sugar to spike pretty quickly. Now that is obviously not healthy for our body in and of itself. Those of you who might have diabetes are probably quite aware of blood sugar and how that can cause problems in your body. But know this, even if you don't have diabetes, we don't want our blood sugar to spike really high and then crash because that's going to tank our energy and we're not gonna feel well. And that will lead us to feeling desperate, craving things, and probably not making the wisest decisions when it comes to what we're gonna eat next. By the way, if you're finding this information useful so far, and I really hope that you are, please subscribe to this channel because I want you to keep getting all of this important nutrition information and helpful tips for how you can improve your diet and overall health. I don't want you to miss a beat. Okay, so that was a little bit of the philosophy of what we need to include in our meal, but maybe you're like me and you're like, Dr. Anna, I just want the practical information. Tell me the foods. Well, I really don't like telling people what to eat. It's not my preference, but I understand that some of you are craving that kind of information. So here's what I suggest. Start the day with plants plant-based foods. A lot of people tend to go for a sweet tasting food, so there's nothing that makes more sense than some whole fruit in its fresh form or even from frozen. Fruit is giving us some nice nutrition. Usually it's packed with vitamin C and fiber. Number two, the next thing that you wanna be eating in the morning are things like nuts or seeds. Nuts or seeds are super nutrient dense. They have all three of the things that I talked about earlier that you want in a healthy breakfast. They have fiber, they have healthy fats, and they have protein. That's why nuts and seeds are like nature's gift to us because you have a food that packs in all three things at once. And you can choose if you wanna eat nuts or seeds in their whole form, which are gonna be kind of crunchy, or if you prefer, eat it as a nut butter. Peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter, 
you choose a variety you like, but all of them are going to be giving you that nice nutrition. Okay, so what's my third food for you? Well, it's some kind of a whole grain. Now, oats are a typical go-to in the morning and they can be cooked in an oatmeal. So that's really nice in the colder weather when we want a hot meal in the morning. Some people also eat it in the muesli form, which are oats and some other nuts or seeds or dried fruit with some liquid component kind of eating like a cereal, or maybe you need that crunch and you wanna make some granola at home. You can even substitute oats for having things like quinoa, which is really a pseudo grain. We call it a grain, but it's not quite a grain and it's got a lot of protein in it. So whichever variety you prefer, I want you to think about incorporating some kind of a whole grain first thing in the morning. Now, you might wanna bind all of these things together into a bowl form, a porridge if it's cooked down, or blended together in a smoothie. So consider something like a yogurt, a cottage cheese, or a ricotta. These are dairy sources that provide us a little bit more protein. If you're avoiding dairy, then try something else that is soy-based or any other nut-based milk. Now, as I mentioned, you can have this in a bowl form if you're gonna be sitting down, but you might be a busy person. You might have to get in the car early in the morning. I can't recommend enough a smoothie. Smoothies are really convenient. You can take them on the go and you can pack in so much nutrition. All of the ingredients that I talked about before, fruit that's fresh or in frozen form, nuts or seeds or nut butters. You can have liquid protein rich foods like yogurt. What's nice is you can also throw on some protein powder to really up the protein content or even sneak in some vegetables like spinach. But here's a pro tip for you. I definitely suggest not blending your smoothies at the crack of dawn. Your neighbors are going to hate you. <laughs> so if you're considering eating a smoothie for breakfast, Breakfast, but you have to leave the house early in the morning. Try blending that smoothie the night before. Just don't forget to grab it from the fridge when you're running out the door. Believe me, it's worth it. Nobody wants to be woken up at 6 or 7 a.m. by the sound of a loud blender. All right, I have to ask all of you, what do you typically eat for breakfast? Comment below. I'd love to know what you are eating already. And if any of the things that I talked about are doable for you and you'd consider trying them, let me know. Share with our community, share with each other some of your ideas of how you can incorporate really healthy foods the first thing in the morning. And for those of you looking for some savory breakfast ideas, here are my top four favorite ideas. Number one, making a toast. What's really popular nowadays is something like an avocado toast, where you take a really big piece of fresh bread, maybe you heat it up, you toast it, smash some avocado on it, and then put on top of it other things that you might like, like an egg, or it could be sliced tomato, or it could be chopped onion, cucumber, drizzle it with some olive oil, put a little bit of spice on it. You can get fancy with this, but it doesn't have to be avocado toast. Something that we like to do in my family is put on a smoked fish spread, so it's called a white fish. It could even be like a cream cheese or a creme fraiche. You could even put on mozzarella cheese, top it with some vegetables and a little bit of a dressing, like a lemon dressing. But the idea is just creating an open-faced sandwich. And if you are gluten-free and you don't eat bread, you can substitute the toast with a rice cake. Idea number two, this is going to be eating eggs as the foundation of your breakfast. And not in the way we're used to doing it in the US. I'm not talking about eggs, bacon, pancakes, waffles. I'm talking about eggs combined with the vegetables and the other foods that we already talked about before. So this might be an omelet or an egg scramble, including things like feta cheese, mushrooms, spinach, tomatoes, you name it. Whatever vegetable you wanna throw in, you can. The other way this is often eaten is as a boiled egg, either a hard boiled or a soft boiled egg. You can also have those eggs aside a piece of toast. Okay, breakfast idea number three. This is something that comes from Israel that I think is so tasty and it's called shakshuka. And these are poached eggs in a tomato and pepper sauce. This is something that can be really spicy if you like a little heat or you can make it mild, herby, you name it. But it is so delicious. You often cook it in a skillet on the stovetop and it's really easy. There are no cooking skills required. Now, before I give you my favorite breakfast idea that you may never have heard of before, I want you to comment below and share what you usually eat for breakfast and share ideas with our healthy community. Here's my fourth breakfast idea. This is something that I discovered when I did a study abroad semester in college in the south of France, and it is called pisaladière. This is a flatbread that comes from the town of Nice. It's a specialty where they take pizza dough, like a regular flatbread baked in the oven, and on top of it is caramelized onions, olives, and sardines. I know this sounds crazy, but it is one of the tastiest things I've ever had before in my whole life. It is crispy 
crispy, it is soft, the flavors are popping, it's unbelievable, and it'd be really easy to make it if you wanted to. Now the reason this is similar to pizza, cool fact, the town of Nice, which is part of France, used to be part of Italy. So the food of that region is very influenced by the Italian cuisine. You get a little bit of both worlds, the French and the Italian combined, and the ugh, flavors are amazing. And now let's dive into our lunch ideas. Given our modern fast paced society, a lot of us are looking to create a lunch that is quick and easy and something we can take with us on the go. So whether we're packing a lunch in advance to bring to work or school, or we're able to eat at home or have access to a kitchen in the middle of the day, we don't wanna to spend too much time preparing all of the food because very likely you're squeezing your lunch into your active day. So here are my top three tips for you for things you want to think about and focus on for hitting that balanced lunch. Now, the first thing I want you to incorporate are fresh vegetables. Now, these vegetables can be in a raw form, in something like a salad, or in a cooked form. Maybe it's leftover vegetables that you had at your dinner the night before, steamed, grilled, roasted, boiled, or maybe they're incorporated into another dish like a soup or a stew. If you're at a restaurant for lunch, try to order something that has a base of it, the bulk of it being vegetables. If you're looking for something like a soup or a stew, consider anything that's vegetable based. So maybe if it's broth or stock based that has vegetables inside of it, or depending on the season of the year, you can have a thicker type of a soup that is rooted in vegetables. So maybe it's a tomato soup or a squash or a pumpkin soup in the fall or winter. Now, if you don't have access to fresh vegetables, that is okay. Do not be afraid to use canned or even frozen. Just always try to do your best with the resources you have around you. All right, my second food for you to try to incorporate into your healthy and balanced lunch on the Mediterranean diet is to include whole grains. Now, the best case scenario is to use whole grains in their natural form. So think of things like cooked rice, couscous, farro, buckwheat, or quinoa. And these things can serve as an amazing base of creating a healthy bowl. There are so many varieties and types of bowls that you can create. You can have a rice bowl, a quinoa bowl, etc. And then you can incorporate into that any vegetables that you like. But also don't be afraid to put grains into soup. One of my favorite soups to eat, especially in the winter time, is soup that has barley in it or barley soup. In the Mediterranean diet, it's really popular in countries like Italy to have a soup like a minestrone that's gonna have some other vegetables or lentils, beans inside of it that can really bulk it up. Of course, I can't talk about lunch without noodles. Noodles can come in a variety of forms. There are wheat noodles, there are buckwheat noodles, and then there are other things like rice noodles or even noodles from chickpeas or lentils. If we're talking about the Mediterranean diet, of course, pasta comes to mind, but thinking about other cuisines, there are other types of noodles that can be incorporated. Of course, this video is focused on the Mediterranean diet, but a lot of Asian foods incorporate noodles into their soups. And these can also be very helpful choices when it comes to building your perfectly balanced lunch. So my third food for you, which really ties the whole meal together, is to focus on your protein of choice. Now the Mediterranean diet focuses on having fish and seafood more than meat. You can also incorporate vegetarian versions of proteins and if you're interested in learning more about that check out my video over here where I take a deeper dive into the Mediterranean diet as a vegetarian version. And this is going to incorporate things like tofu that come from soybeans or lots of other beans and lentils. Now meat is included in the Mediterranean diet, but meats that are of the red meat variety. So think of things like beef, lamb, or pork. These are things that are typically eaten in lesser amounts overall in the Mediterranean diet. So they would not necessarily be eaten daily. Instead, you can opt for leaner proteins like turkey, chicken, or even things like eggs. All right, now what about dressings? So when it comes to salad dressing, on the Mediterranean diet, there's really just one main player, and it's olive oil with some kind of acidic component, be it a vinegar or lemon juice. In some parts of the Mediterranean region, like in Greece, Turkey, or Israel, they're also going to use things like tahini dressing, which is a paste made of pure sesame seed. Another popular thing that binds everything together is something like hummus, which is kind of a ground liquidy form of garbanzo beans or chickpeas that has inside of it a little olive oil, a little tahini, and some salt. Now I know in the US we love to have these very thick creamy dressings and those are fantastic once in a while, 
but pay attention because unfortunately, a lot of the kinds of salad dressings that you buy from the store shelves are loaded with so many chemicals and added sugars and unhealthy oils. So it is something to pay attention to. When it comes to eating the Mediterranean diet, the simpler, the better. Now, I want you to think about this. What was not really focused on so far in this video? Which things did I not mention? Well, that would be dairy, sweets, and a lot of processed foods. In general, the Mediterranean diet is going to decrease the amount of these things in your diet overall. So I want to de-emphasize them as much as I can. They're not eliminated entirely. There is a way to incorporate them into an overall healthy Mediterranean diet, but you don't want to think about these things as the core components of the diet. They're really to be eaten more sparingly. Now our conversation here would not be complete without mentioning the fact that the Mediterranean diet is typically enjoyed with longer, slower meals. So in our US culture, that might be a little bit difficult when we're in the middle of our work day or our school day. But keeping in mind that the slower we chew our food, the better our digestion is going to be is a nice, easy way that you can focus on improving your digestion even when you're short on time. Now, here's my bonus for you. What do I actually eat almost every single day as a nutrition-focused doctor? Well, I'm busy. I have a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, and I like to keep it really easy for myself. So in the warmer months of the year, I'm typically going to eat a salad, and I like to eat really big salads. I try to change up which protein I'm using, which types of fixings I'm going to add on top of it, if I'm gonna put some sliced nuts, some seeds, and then maybe some of the flavorings. Sometimes I use lemon juice, sometimes I use balsamic vinegar, but generally speaking, I'm going to keep it kind of simple for myself. So this really cuts down on the time I need to be thinking and planning my meals. In the warmer months of the year, I like to have something that is cooked because that helps warm my body up in the middle of the cold day. So I'll probably go for the leftovers that I had last night. And given that I'm typically eating a Mediterranean diet approach, it's very easy for me to have some cooked grains, some leftover protein, whether I had fish or meat, and then adding in whatever vegetables I cooked the night before. Maybe they were roasted or steamed. And then I typically try to bind it together with a dressing that's like an olive oil and a vinegar, or maybe it has a little bit of tahini drizzled on top. I really recommend that you make it as simple for yourself as possible. Knowing which things that you like to eat is going to really help save you time because then you're going to be excited to eat a healthy meal. If you try to force yourself to eat things that you don't like, it's not going to last for a very long time. And the true beauty and the benefits of the Mediterranean diet come when you practice eating this way for a long period of time meaning many years. So my question for you now, what do you typically eat for lunch? Comment and share below so we can share some really healthy, delicious lunch ideas with each other. And now for our dinner ideas. All right, what are the foods that we wanna target when creating a very healthy and balanced dinner on the Mediterranean diet? I want us to simplify in our minds thinking about three main food groups to incorporate this diet. And these are going to be vegetables, whole grains in our source of protein. Now in a traditional Mediterranean diet approach to eating that follows the Italian cuisine, they're going to often have courses in their dinner. They'll have their first course called their primo or the second course called their secondo. And then there will also be some side dishes called contorni. Now thinking about what they actually eat, they start the first course, which is a smaller dish, usually focused on grains and vegetables. Of course, Italians eat a lot of pasta. So a pasta or a risotto is a typical first course of the meal, but it doesn't have to be. Also having soups or stews that are vegetable focused. Think of a minestrone soup that's going to have lots of vegetables or even beans or lentils inside of it are a great first course. You can even find some varieties of pasta that are served in broth. Think of tortellini that are served in a broth, very traditional style, super delicious. And now the second course is going to be focused on the protein. Of course, the Mediterranean diet is really abundant in having fish or seafood as the protein source, emphasized more than eating poultry or other types of meat like red meat. But if you're vegetarian and you're not interested in eating fish, seafood, or any type of meat, don't worry. There are tons of amazing and delicious protein options for you. And I break them down in this video over here 
where I go through a Mediterranean diet vegetarian version so that you can know exactly what to eat and what to think about to meet your health needs following the Mediterranean diet without eating fish or meat. And now the third group of food is the vegetable. Now vegetables I mentioned can be served in the first course. For example, in the Italian cuisine, often the vegetable is served as a side dish with the second course. So you'll get your main protein, whether it's a fish or a meat or some other kind of protein like egg, and then you'll have a vegetable either on the side or incorporated into it. I like this approach to eating because it's very simple and easy to replicate. And now you might be wondering, what if you're going out to eat at a restaurant or eating at somebody else's house and you're with friends or family and you're thinking about following the Mediterranean diet approach to eating, but you're looking at a menu? Well, I'm still going to encourage the same approach. I want you to look at a restaurant menu, focusing on making sure whatever you order has three of these main components of food. It has a vegetable, it has some kind of a grain, ideally a whole grain that's unprocessed and some healthy protein like fish or seafood, some beans or lentils, tofu or meat. And as a rule of thumb, if it's not clear if what you're ordering has all three components, meaning if you can't tell that there would be one out of those three in there or two out of those three in there, maybe that's not the best thing to select if you're trying to eat healthfully following the Mediterranean diet. Now those are the three foods you wanna be thinking about. But what about binding everything together to make it sort of a dish and kind of finish it off? It's always nice to have sort of a wet component to your meal, like a sauce or a dressing to kind of bind things together. And the Mediterranean diet is full and abundant with lots of these things. Think about tzatziki, which is a yogurt-based dip that comes from the Greek cuisine. You could have hummus, which is a chickpea or garbanzo bean based paste that is created, or tahini, which is crushed sesame seeds, or having some Spanish style spicy pepper dips that are rooted in bell peppers. There's also things like baba ganoush that has a base of eggplant. So you can kind of get the flavor of what I'm talking about. There's a lot of variety of dips and saucy things that are so great for binding everything together and bringing out the flavor of the food you're eating. Now here's the fun part. If you're thinking about how to cook a meal for yourself and your family at home following the Mediterranean diet approach, there is not enough ways that I can describe to you of how to incorporate all of these things together. Get creative here. You can have separate courses like I talked about with the Italian style where you can bind everything together and make a bowl. You could pick two of these things and combine them together. Maybe you're making a soup or a stew. Maybe you wanna make a casserole or a lasagna. See if you can incorporate all three of these things, the whole grains, the vegetables, and your protein source into whatever you're making and have a lot of fun with it. Experiment, try new things. You will be surprised at how simple this can be. And then don't forget about things that are appropriate for the season that we're in. So if it's summertime, you wanna be grilling outside, grill your meat or vegetables or fish all together. Without even realizing it, you are going to be meeting all of your nutritional needs that ease digestion because having vegetables, healthy grains, healthy protein sources is all going to help you meet your needs for the healthy fats, the fiber, and the protein. And now notice what is not a core component of a healthy and balanced dinner on the Mediterranean diet. Well, it's not dairy, sweet, or highly processed foods. These are not completely to be avoided at all costs, but they are de-emphasized in general. We want to eat these things more sparingly. And now jumping into our Mediterranean diet snack ideas. I'm going to give you these three foods that I think are the best way to sustain your energy with a snack. Now the first food that I have for you of things you wanna incorporate in a snack is to have fruits or vegetables. Nature really did us a solid on this one. A lot of fruits are kind of ready to go because they have a peel outside of them where they're protected. So you can throw that into your lunchbox or into your purse or backpack. But choosing the right fruit or vegetable to have in your snack is really up to you. It basically comes down to what you like. I also suggest to think about eating seasonally when it comes to choosing the fruit or the vegetable to incorporate. So if we're talking about summertime, berries or stone fruits like peaches or plums are the perfect thing to have as a snack. Even making an easy tomato cucumber salad is a great way to snack with summer vegetables. If we're in the fall season, then of course apples or pears make a lot of sense, but even things like figs or grapes are delicious snacks. Now in 
in the winter, it makes a lot of sense to have citrus fruits like orange or a grapefruit or snacking on some vegetable sticks like carrots, maybe they're baby carrots or even celery stalk. Thinking about the springtime, I suggest having like a light salad, some greens or maybe blending them into a green smoothie. Of course, thinking about snacks and if we're talking about fruit, dried fruit comes to mind because lots of trail mixes incorporate it. Dried fruit can be healthy, but just pay attention that you're trying to get a variety that's not loaded with added sugar. A lot of the times, manufacturers are going to add sugar to that dried fruit. So just pay attention to how much added sugar you're eating in your diet overall. All right, the next food that is really important in building a healthy snack are to have things like nuts or nut butters. Of course, these are going to be things like peanuts, almonds, cashews, pecans, or walnuts in whole form, but nut butters can be really nice and easy to eat with things like sliced apple or celery. What's amazing about nuts is that they're so nutrient dense and actually they hit on all three of our nutritional components that we talked about in the beginning. They have healthy fat, they have fiber and they have some protein. Additionally, they have a pretty long shelf life. So if you're keeping these things in a pantry or in the fridge, make sure they're out of the sunlight so that the healthy oils in them are not starting to get broken down and become rancid. You'll know if your nuts are still healthy if you smell them and they don't really have a smell. That's a good thing. If they start to have sort of this odor, you might want to think about tossing those and getting a new bag. And now the third food that I want you to add into your healthy snack is anything that boosts up the protein level in your day. So think of things like yogurt or a protein rich dip like hummus, tzatziki, tahini dressing. And don't be afraid to enjoy some other varieties of snacks that are really easy and are grab and go, but in general are eaten at a lower amount in the Mediterranean diet. So these are sweets like chocolate, so you can incorporate something like a dark chocolate that has a little less sugar, or some soft cheeses like mozzarella or even ricotta or cottage cheese, and something like a hard cheese or a Parmesan. These are all going to give you a little boost of protein and some of that fat that is going to sustain your energy for long. Longer. My pro tip for you is to make sure you have some kind of a snack with you whenever you are on the go. Now, if you are just craving some healthy dessert ideas, you're probably thinking to yourself right now that the Mediterranean diet is all about healthy living, healthy eating. So then can the dessert itself be healthy? Well, I would argue absolutely it can. These are my top three recommendations of a healthier dessert. And this is typically what people are eating as a dessert on a traditional Mediterranean diet in the cultures surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. So the first one, and I think this won't surprise any of you, is fruit. Fruit can be seasonally enjoyed, so we have a nice variety of fruit throughout the entire calendar year, and that can help keep things exciting. Change it up, you can have fruit raw, you can cook it, you can include it in something else, you can freeze it. There are just so many ways to enjoy dessert that is a fruit-based dessert. If you wanna keep it really simple for yourself, then I suggest doing something that I like to do at the end of my days. You take a little bit of fruit, maybe it's berries, you put some kind of a whipped topping on it. This could be milk-based, non-dairy milk-based, or it could even be like tofu-based. I've seen people make these really amazing tofu whips. And you put that on the berries and then drizzle a little bit of something that you like on top. So that can be peanut butter, it can be almond butter, it can be honey, it can be maple syrup. And then add a little bit of crunch. Maybe it's slivered almonds, maybe it's pecans, maybe it's chocolate shavings. Keep it simple for yourself, but I would definitely suggest that you go for the flavors that you like. Obviously, when it comes to dessert, there are just not enough baked goods that we could even list in this video, because we have cakes, cookies, muffins, pastries, tarts, layers of all kinds of things, and often these are going to include fruit. But what I'm trying to emphasize when I talk about fruit as a dessert following the Mediterranean diet is thinking about fruit as the bulk component of the dessert, rather than a chocolate layer cake with just a skinny little layer of raspberry sauce in the middle. That's not really what I'm talking about here. That's fruit flavored dessert. I'm really talking about fruit as dessert in as whole of a form as possible. So what's my second dessert idea? Well, it's to eat nuts or seeds. And this is something that is so abundant in the Mediterranean region. Ever heard of baklava? Well, that's a very thin phyllo dough, so a pastry dough that is just layered with nuts. It's mostly pistachios, it could be almonds or walnuts with a honey that binds it all together. But there are tons of other examples of desserts that have a lot of nuts or seeds in them 
them that come from North Africa and Israel, Lebanon, Turkey, all of these cultures surrounding the Mediterranean region. If you like that salty flavor, go ahead and have salted nuts for dessert. There is nothing wrong with that. Or you can just have some candied nuts. Now I do have to mention, just like with the fruit, I do suggest that you have a dessert that's really nut based. If you're gonna go for the concept of nuts or seeds as dessert, rather than just something nut flavored. One of my favorite things under the sun is an almond croissant. But I would not argue that that's exactly a healthy dessert option. That just has the flavoring of almond, but it's really mostly just a little bit of dough and butter. So I'm really talking about for a healthy dessert option in the Mediterranean diet, something that's nut based. Now my third option for you for Mediterranean diet desserts are frozen treats. Now, of course, Italy is in the center of the Mediterranean Sea and they are very famous for the gelato. There are so many flavors of gelato. You can have the kind that is milk-based or you can have the kind that has no milk that's like a sorbet or what they call sorbetto. So you decide what kind you like. Keep in mind that if you're going for the one that's milk-based, it's gonna have a lot more fat and a lot more calories. But for those of you who are looking to lose weight or you are watching your calorie intake, be aware that a sorbet that has like a fruit base and doesn't include any milk and it doesn't include egg is definitely gonna be lower in calories than something like a traditional gelato. Something that I started doing during COVID was making nice cream. I take my blender, I get some frozen bananas, and then I blend it. Maybe I put some chocolate powder or a little bit of peanut butter, and I sort of make my own ice cream at home, but it's not milk-based, it's banana-based or it's fruit-based. So you can be creative. There are definitely different options. In general, if you're having something like a frozen dessert that you need to eat with a spoon or in a cone, you're doing that often instead of something like a cake, a pie, a cookie, a muffin. You get the idea. Some of those very heavy desserts, which can help us de decrease the amount of processed things we're eating in our diet overall. Now, don't be afraid to enjoy some other types of desserts that are not on my list of top three. Things like a square of dark chocolate or even cheese. In France, they often have a plate of cheese for dessert. That might be different types of cheese with a jam. It could be an onion jam, a fig jam. You can be creative here. But like I mentioned before, dessert does not have to be sweet. It just needs to have something that you can finish the meal off with. So now I gotta ask all of you to comment and share below what your favorite desserts are. Go ahead, tell us your favorite healthier dessert and the one that's not so healthy. So if you like desserts and if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and share this video with with some friends or family members that you think could benefit from learning a little bit more about healthy dessert options. So now that you've been loaded up with ideas for what to eat throughout your entire day, you're ready to start putting it together in your perfect Mediterranean diet meal plan. So I have the perfect video for you here. You're going to love it. Check it out. I'll see you over there.